certified as DBEs or MWBEs or hubs, those certifications can be beneficial to your business. And I urge you to see if you qualify. Here at Go Triangle, we use a lot of certified businesses and we're always looking for more. Now, I want to share some statistical information with you on the impact of small and minority businesses. The small and the small and the small business administration, they define a small business as one with less than 500 employees. Now we know that 500 employees is not typical for many small businesses. The average, average is typically one to four employees, and for the majority, for the majority of five to nine, 19 employees. And for some small and minority businesses, they don't have any employee, it's just the owner. But you know what they do have? They have a desire to succeed, to be their own boss, a sense of ownership. Now, from the slide, you can see in the United States, there are 30.7 million small businesses. And of course, small businesses, they include the DBEs and the MWBs and hub firms. Minorities, they own 45% of small businesses. That's almost 14 million businesses owned by minorities. Black American, Hispanics, Native American, Asian Pacific Americans. And small businesses employ 60 million people. That's a lot of jobs that allows us to take care of our families. And there are more than 8.7 million minority owned business employees. Now, as you can see the impact that your business has on the economy. You know, it's, it's not only the large, large corporations that drive the economy that creates jobs, but it's you, the small and minority owned firms that provide job opportunities right here in our community. And that's why you and your business are such a vital part of the economy. Now, I, I imagine for many of you, the past year has been a challenging one. Yes, uh, 2020 was a year of unique challenge, but the small and minority business owners, DBEs, MBEs, WBEs, and hub firms, you continue to adapt. You continue to learn new skills. You continue to overcome so many obstacles, but you're still standing. You're still standing because challenges, they're not new to you. Many of you have had to refocus. You've had to view things differently than you have in the past. You've had to manage your business differently in this new environment. But we all know that change is unavoidable and it can be challenging. But, but change, it can be an opportunity to refocus on new strategies, on new opportunities. And we hope that some of the information that is provided this conference today will be helpful to your business as you continue to grow and evolve. Now, as director of Go Triangle's DBE program, I've had the opportunity to meet and speak with many of you through the years. I am so impressed. You have a hang in there attitude, a desire to succeed, and you still remain hopeful and committed. Some people say that this is the new normal, but for small and minorities, minority businesses, it's never been normal. Small and minority businesses, they often face barriers greater than non-minority owned businesses, whether it's access to funding, access to contracts, a negative view or stereotype for your business, but that hasn't stopped you. And that's the reason for this conference. We want you to be successful. But let me stop there because I need to introduce some speakers that are participating in our conference. It's not only Go Triangle staff, but we also have other agencies that are joining us today to share some important information. We have Sean Egan. He's the director of transportation with the city of Durham and Rochelle Parent, assistant director of mobility with the city of Durham. And they will have some remarks to share with us in a few minutes. We also have Tammy Hall, director of the office for historically underutilized businesses. And we typically refer to it as the hub office. Now, Ms. Hall, she has been an advocate a supporter for minority and women owned business businesses or has known it for as long as I've known her. Tammy, thank you so much for participating today. And we have Lisa Wilson, certification manager with the North Carolina, North Carolina Department of Transportation. She will discuss the certification process. And I think Lisa will also discuss the Business Opportunity and Workforce Development Office and is commonly known as the BOWD office. Lisa will tell you about the services they offer to certified businesses. And Lisa, thanks to you as well for participating. 
Now, let me say this for those that have questions. Would you please ask them in the chat box? And if we have time, we will answer each question. Now, if time does not allow us to answer questions today, we will send an email response to your questions. And lastly, I am delighted to introduce Go Triangle's president and CEO, Charles Latuka, who will be sharing some opening remarks. Now, Chuck, he's been in this position for less than a year with Go Triangle, but he hit the ground running when he uh, joined Go Triangle, and he understands the importance of sharing economic opportunities with minority and small businesses. That's been one of his initiatives, but I'll let Chuck speak for himself. I present to you Charles Latuka, President and CEO of Go Triangle. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvester. Thank you very much. And good morning to everybody. And I'm so happy we've had so many people join us this morning. Uh, it's very, it's, uh, it's, it's very nice on a Friday to draw such a large number of people uh, to talk about this issue today. So, um, yes, I've been here about a year. I come, I come to you from Maryland uh, uh, Transit Administration, and uh, uh, in I've been here uh, for a year. And I, uh, my last job was in, I was in charge of a light rail project called the Purple Line, and this is a was a two billion dollar project that had a lot of opportunities for DBE, and we did a lot of outreach for DBE, and interface with uh, business groups. We had workshops. Uh, we had we worked with our contractors to hold other workshops and job fairs. And, you know, one of the reasons why I've been involved with transportation for over 30 years now, and I hate to admit it, it's been over 30 years, is that I, I love transportation because, A, it gets people to a job and it creates a job. And you know what? There's nothing better than that. Getting people to their job, their health care, their school, and at the same time, having projects to build that create new jobs for people. So we not only we connect people to opportunities, but we create opportunities for people to work. And this is another way of us reaching out to make sure that we can get people to work and have our small business partners. We want to connect with, with you folks. We want to build our database and our connections. We are going to up our DBE and minority business goals uh, in our contracts. Uh, and Sylvester, and, and uh, we'll tell you more about that. Uh, I think historically, uh, we've had some very uh, um, uh, good goals, but they could have always gotten better. So we're improving our goals for our contracting. Uh, we want to be a resource for folks. Uh, we want to be a resource for you. And if we can't be the resource, we will connect you to the resource to help you successfully participate in bidding for a contract. Now, we don't have a huge capital budget where we have huge contracts right now. But this agency will have very large contracts coming up. And Catherine Eggleston here on, uh, is on the call today, and she will explain these to you. Uh, but we have something called the Raleigh Union Station Bus Transfer Center uh, a project that's an over $25, $20 million contract. We have a regional transit center relocation project coming up. That's going to be a $25 million plus contract. And the big one that we're working on right now is a planning study a planning for study. commuter rail that that could be as much as $1.8 billion to build a commuter rail from connecting hopefully Clayton all the way through Raleigh and Durham. And that'll be a 43 miles of new commuter rail, a new transit alternative to help people get to work. And that is gonna create a heck of a lot of jobs. So in order to get ready for all these projects and also to be a good business partner to the, to the community today, we wanna have this conference and make sure that we are talking to everybody we can talk to uh, about the opportunities that exist. We wanna find out what folks are, do, are doing out there, that uh, specialties that we can use and we want to make sure that, um, um, that we have a very successful program because we know all these projects that I just mentioned to you have strong federal funding components and they will have strong DBE goals. And uh, in order to meet those goals, we have to have the capacity, not only just uh, in setting these goals, but in also getting people informed and, and into, the, into the work so we can meet those goals, connect them with the, contractors, connect them with the project teams. And that's why we're here today. We have a great bunch of folks here that are going to be, uh, uh, you know, telling you uh, what's coming up, 
how, and how to and how to plug in. And if you're not a certified DBE uh, on the DOT uh, uh, list, then then they're going to tell you how to do that. So with that, I am going to turn that over to our professionals uh, that will they really know what they're talking about. And uh, I hope everybody enjoys today's conference, and we look forward to meeting you all very soon in the future. Thank you. All right, uh, Sylvester, should I just dive right in? Yeah, uh, I was going to give you a little intro, but Sean, just go right ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sylvester and, and Chuck, for um, the invitation to come here uh, and speak to um, our uh, small women-owned and minority-owned businesses here um, in the region. This is a really exciting opportunity uh, for us to continue to build partnerships and relationships uh, with this community. I want to talk a little bit about some of the uh, the other uh, city of Durham uh, staff who are joining us today, we've, we've brought our A team um, to make sure that uh, we make ourselves available to uh, all the folks here. So we have Deborah Giles, who's our director of equity and inclusion, uh, Eric Miller, uh, who's a senior equity and inclusion specialist in the equity and inclusion department, uh, Andre Pettigrew, who's the director of the Office of Economic and Work Workforce Development, OEWD. Summer Alston, our Senior Economic Development Coordinator at OEWD, and Chris Dickey, who's an Economic Development Coordinator at OEWD. And I want to talk just a little bit about uh, the past year. So we in the city of Durham, we're responsible for the Go Durham uh, bus service uh, and the infrastructure that supports that service. Uh, so we have been working to develop partnerships with Durham County through the Durham County Transit Plan, with the Durham Chapel Hill Carborough Metropolitan Planning Organization, and with Go Triangle to address the need for bus stop improvements. We have about 800 bus stops uh, that are in need of improvement of more than 900 in the system. And so we've developed a really strategic partnership with Go Triangle uh, to address these bus stop needs. And over the last year, the city of Durham has worked in partnership with Go Triangle to improve 54 Go Durham bus stops uh, at a cost of $1.3 million for six contracts. Now that funding comes from the Durham County Transit Plan uh, that is approved by the Durham County Board of uh, County Commissioners, uh, the, the Durham Chapel Hill Carborough MPO, uh, and the Go Triangle Board. Uh, and during that last year, that $1.3 million, more than 80% of the value of those six contracts was awarded to hub certified uh, businesses uh, right here in North Carolina. And so we talk a lot about setting goals uh, and uh, we, we can set ambitious goals, but I think what we've learned from this experience over the last few years is that we've achieved results where uh, minority and women owned small businesses have won more than a million dollars worth of contracts over 80% of the contract value for those 54 bus stops uh, that serve our Go Durham uh, customers uh, and our community was awarded to those uh, hub, hub certified businesses. So we're really excited about the success um, that uh, Go Triangle, Sylvester and his team, uh, Rick Major, uh, Catherine, uh, all of our partners at Go Triangle, we're excited about the success uh, that they've built. And we really wanna learn from the community here how do we replicate and scale uh, that success that we've seen over the last year with uh, more than a million dollars of contracts awarded to those uh, hub certified businesses? So we think this is a great opportunity to learn from you. And like I said, this is just the beginning. We have hundreds more uh, of these projects coming up uh, that uh, where we wanna make all of our bus stops accessible. We wanna provide sidewalk and crosswalk connections to all of our bus stops. And then the city has also uh, been awarded funding for major corridor level improvements through the Durham County Transit Plan for the Fayetteville Street Transit Emphasis Corridor, for the Holloway Street Transit Emphasis Corridor, for the Village Transit Center at Wellens Village. Uh, and we're, we're also working on projects uh, across Durham to improve both service and infrastructure. And we really see the model of uh, these awards where the prime contracts were awarded to uh, hub certified businesses over the last year. We really see that as a model going forward where we can continue uh, to work to uh, prioritize and advance uh, those, uh, the businesses that are winning that work, build up their capacity so that they continue to support 
this really important work that we're doing in the city of Durham to uh, improve transit infrastructure uh, for our transit riders. Uh, so with that, I'm going to hand it off to uh, our assistant director, uh, Rochelle Parent. Good morning, everyone. Um, not much I can add to Sean except for uh, saying how excited and, and very grateful we are that you welcomed us here today, most importantly to learn um, from the blueprint of, of what's already been, been done and, and what can be done better um, so that we can replicate it. Uh, we are very committed um, <clears throat> to supporting this effort and making sure that there is equity and inclusion in our hiring practices and, and the projects that, that we execute. Um, so we thank you all for joining today and for inviting us um, for the opportunity to, to learn um, and look forward to potentially working with you in the future. Okay, uh, thank you so, so, so much, Ms. Barrett. Uh, now we have uh, Ms. Tammy. Uh, is it yes? Yeah, now we have uh, Tammy Hall, a director for the Office of Historically Unutilized Businesses. Okay, good morning to everyone. It is a beautiful Friday. I'm actually in Wilmington, North Carolina today uh, to visit with one of our oldest African American uh, news uh, media outlets, the Wilmington Journal. So it is a pleasure to be here in partnership with Go Triangle and certainly NCDOT and the city of Durham. Uh, this is a great time. It's a great time for uh, us to really have some, some conversations around how we drive diversity and inclusion in our business practices, and particularly the supply chain so that we better um, prepare and, and grow our community. So it's always a pleasure for us to be um, with you all. And as Sylvester says, I've been here 17 years and I've known him all 17 of those years. And so I do know that there is a commitment to uh, diversity and inclusion from a business practice. I've had the opportunity to talk to Chuck as well and had some great conversations around uh, things that we could do to collaborate and this is one of them. And so it's uh, a pleasure to see so many of you as was said earlier on um, this webinar today. So when we talk about hub certification and many of you that are with us are hub certified, if not, you are missing out being a part of a great family. And so if you are not hub certified, I certainly would ask that you Google North Carolina hub office, H-U-B office. We get confused with HUD, but we are not HUD. We are hub, H-U-B, hub office, historically underutilized businesses. Our process is fairly simple. 51% owned and operated involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the business and in one of our minority categories. And one of the beauties of today is we already have reciprocity with NCDOT. So if you are NCDOT DBE certified, you automatically qualify for hub certification. So we ask you to go through that channel first and you'll hear from our colleagues. I think Lisa Wilson is on after me or shortly after me, and she will give you the DBE certification process. So if you meet those criteria, the criteria that she will indicate to you, you certainly do qualify for HUB certification. But let me tell you, we are very um, strict around who is HUB certified because we want to maintain the integrity of the database. We really are stringent on whether or not you meet Maybe the categories. And um, if you meet those categories, then certainly we would like for you to pursue government work, state government work. If you heard the governor release his budget earlier this week, there is the possibility of a $4 billion bond referendum for infrastructure and capital projects. That's a lot of work. The last bond referendum, and Sylvester, you may remember, it was over a decade ago, we did a $3 billion bond referendum for higher education, which really was the blossom of minority and women-owned business programs throughout the state of North Carolina. So certainly uh, there is lots of work going on, whether we have a bond referendum or not, there is a lot of work going on in state government and in our federal spaces. So um, I would just ask that, you know, consider the certification processes, they are free. 
We do not charge. They're absolutely free. Hub certification lasts for four years and you renew. And then you go into a public database and even private sector has access to your business along with state government. So uh, without further ado, Sylvester, I know you've got lots for everybody to learn. It is a pleasure to be with you. I know that our office is on, so if there are any questions, put them in the chat. We're more than happy to respond. If not, you guys have a great day and enjoy your weekend. Thank you, Sylvester. Thank you, Tammy, and safe travel to you. That's a lot of great news coming from your office. Thank you, sir. Uh, next, we will have uh, Lisa Wilson. She is the certification manager with the North Carolina Department of Transportation. Uh, so she's in charge of all those certifications. So uh, Lisa, uh, we're going to turn it over to you. OK, great. Um, good morning, everyone. Nice to see everyone. Um, I'm going to get my first shot today as well. So <laughs> we're getting going in the right direction. I'm going to share my screen with you and show you a PowerPoint. So if you'll be patient with me just one second, I'll get that up. OK, I hope everyone can see that. OK, so I'm going to talk to you about the different types of certification that our office offers. Um, of course, there's the DBE, which has already been mentioned, the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Program, and that is for federal and state projects. And when you become DBE certified, you either get an M a minority designation or a woman, a woman designation. Um, so if you're a DBE, you're um, one of those two, and we do still track those, um, the utilization of those um, minority groups. Although with the state projects where we used to set two goals, one for minority and one for women, we now follow the um, federal program and, and just have one goal. So however you meet that goal um, will work. We also have some state programs, the SBE, which is the Small Business Enterprise. Those are firms who have less than $1.5 million in revenue, and typically those projects are set aside for those firms. Um, they're small projects under $500,000, um, usually maintenance projects that are low risk. Um, it gives the small business a way to get some experience under their belt, and um, and they don't have to be pre-qualified, which for most projects um, with DOT, you do also have to be pre-qualified. Sometimes people get those two things mixed up, certification and pre-qualification, but they're two separate things. Um, we also have the small professional service firms. That's for our small firms who are engaged in technical uh, work, so pre-construction, consulting, engineering, architecture, GIS, that kind of thing. And then Tammy has already mentioned the hub um, certification, and we do like to mention that as well when we are um, spreading the word about our certifications. Um, it is something that um, we do have reciprocity with um, the hub office. If you're DBE certified, you can pretty easily just with the form um, telling us that we have permission to release your information, become hub certified. Now it does not work the other way because there's just some different eligibility requirements um, for DBE than there are for the um, Lisa, you're muted. Lisa, you're muted. OK, someone muted me. Sorry. <laughs> Don't know how that happened. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. OK. Um, so the objectives of the DBE program are to ensure non-discrimination in transportation contracting. So that's in highway transit and aviation. Um, so we look at it for all three of those um, modes. And we also want to create a level playing field where DBEs can compete fairly for DOT assisted contracts. We also want to ensure that firms that fully meet eligibility standards are permitted to participate as a DBE. So we go through a lot of um, questions, a lot of forms, some interviews, um, uh, in, on-site interview to make sure that the things that they um, the firm says they're doing they are doing so we're very um, very in, um, in 
we want to make sure that we ensure that they're definitely eligible um, before we give them that certification. We also um, want to assist in the development of firms to compete successfully in the marketplace outside the DBE program. Um, we had, you know, as most of you know, the um, Department of Highway um, division had a lot of budget issues for over the last 18 months, and so some firms were negatively impacted by that. So we want to make sure that they have skills and experience that can help them outside of the DBE program as well. And then also certification is a tool which can help businesses grow. The eligibility um, requirements for the DBE program are a little different than HUB. Um, we look at both your social disadvantage and your economic disadvantage. Um, socially economic um, means that you are in one of the designated socially disadvantaged groups, so you're either a minority or you're woman owned. Um, economic disadvantage, we look at the individual who is being relied upon for the certification to see if their personal net worth is less than 1.32 million. And we do that because we want to make sure that, um, you know, the, the firm is, is truly run by someone who has been um, disadvantaged. And then also we look at the size of the of the firm. Um, we were talking earlier about this, you know, how under 500 employees is considered small by SBA. Well, SBA also sets limits um, for different NAICS codes. Um, and if you are averaging um, more than the, that set cap over a three year period, or now it's moving to a five year period, then um, you can qualify. But if you go over that cap, you have, as we say, graduated out of the program. Um, there's also a very, um, uh, a limit for the program in general. So whichever one you get to first. So it's just recently been upped, been increased to 26 point 29 million and then for your airport concessions DBE, DBEs it's less than 56.42 million um, and then the other thing we look at is ownership we want to make sure that the firm is owned at least 51% uh, by a disadvantaged member and then we also look at control so we make sure that the person who is um, in in that 51% um, ownership role that they actually manage the, pro the firm. They actually have control over the policy and the operations of the building of the business. They need to actually be, um, you know, the highest paid. They need to be the highest title in the um, in the company. So we look at all of those things when we're evaluating eligibility. How do you get certified? Well, we recently joined the new technology and now have an online portal. So we actually have a uh, website that you can go to. Um, it's listed here, connect.ncdot.gov slash be certified. Or if you um, you know can't find it that way, you can actually Google um, North Carolina Department um, and then online portal and you should be able to get to it. There's two steps to get um, get into the system. First of all, you have to register for an NCID um, as an individual. So that's a little different than pre-qualification. Pre-qualification, you have to register as a business. So you register and get your NCID and then you request access to our EBS system. Once you have those two things, then you're able to um, go into the portal and um, you can so you can get either your renewals done that way, or if you're doing your initial certification, you can do that. And you can get all of those um, DBE, SBE, and SPSF um, all right there um, in the portal. And again, you can do your renewals from there as well. So it's been a great advantage. It's had some challenges, but we've overcome a lot of those challenges and are working through them as they come up. Um, the benefits of being DBE certified, Basically, it's free marketing in our directory of firms, which I think Tammy mentioned. Um, it basically gives the um, the public access to your contact information and what it is that you do um, by way of work codes or NAICS codes. And it's real important to keep that directory um, up to date. So if you have changes in your firm, like email address changes or phone numbers, we would like for you to let us know so we can change that. Um, there's some pretty neat ways you can do some searches in the directory of firms by NAICS codes, by work codes, by certification. So several different ways to find the population that you're looking for. And you can actually download that um, those results into a, an Excel spreadsheet where you can use, you know, to slice and dice the data however you'd like. And you can also you know use it as um, get the email addresses from there and, and have an automatic mailing list. Um, so it's very useful if you um, want to take a look at that. It, it's really a helpful tool and it does help help our firms um, market themselves. 
And then also you have contract protection uh, as a DBE because we actually have a utilization um, and um, a utilization department that actually goes out onto the projects and make sure that there's no discrimination occurring. And also our contracts are written in such a way um, that does not allow discrimination. So you have that contract protection. Um, it also obviously the big way is that you're helping prime contractors meet their goals that have been set on the projects. And so that is um, one of the most, th the things that makes you look most attractive um, and to prime contractors who are looking for subcontractors. And then we already mentioned hub reciprocity, which is a great benefit. And then valve services, um, Sylvester mentioned earlier, um, we have, because we have a DBE program, Federal Highway also ends up giving us money to help um, support those businesses. So we have money where we can do training, we can provide uh, certain things that um, a firm might need to be successful. For example, membership into a networking group or an industry um, an industry association. Um, we can also help with if you need um, some accounting software. Um, as long as our budget is allowing those types of things, um, there is a limit on how much each firm can get. Um, but most of our programs are free to the DBEs. We have um, a, an a good partnership with NCSU where we offer several different classes. Um, one is just construction and then the other is their ITRI program, if you're familiar with that, um, where they have a lot of different um, classes that you can take as a DBE and we can reimburse you. So um, a lot of good things that are available in the BOWD unit. Um, so we can talk more about that if you'd like, but just wanted to let you know that that does exist and it exists there to help make um, all the DBEs um, as successful as possible. And that's all I have. Unless someone has some questions they want to put in the chat, I'll be happy to um, to answer those if, if I can. Uh, uh, Lisa, what we're going to do, uh, we are going to try to come back to the questions later on because of the time constraints and uh, okay. I'll probably forward and use some of the questions so that we can make sure we get them answered. But that's a lot of great information. So you go on online now with the uh, to apply for certification. That's excellent. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, ne next, we'll have uh, Catherine Eggleston. Uh, she's with a uh, She's our chief development officer here at Gold Triangle, and she's going to talk about major capital projects. Uh, Catherine, it's yours. Thank you. Can you all hear me? Yes. Excellent. I'm connected by phone here, uh, hoping for quality audio. Um, Thank you, Sylvester. As Sylvester said, uh, my name is Catherine Eggleston. I'm Chief Development Officer here at Gold Triangle. I oversee our planning uh, and capital project delivery uh, programs. Um, the, just want to share some information with you today about major capital projects. I really appreciate Sean's comments earlier about the success that we've had partnering with Serum on some of our uh, small capital projects, which really are um, kind of the backbone of our program, things that we have continuing from year to year to year on um, bus stop improvements. We really hope to uh, take the success that we've had in, in delivering those projects over the past year um, and uh, expand that in Durham and across the triangle uh, as we move forward. Uh, but we also in our program have uh, some major capital projects that I want to forecast uh, for this group today. Uh, as you all may know, the region has three county plans in place in Durham, Orange and Wake. Uh, within those plans, uh, Go Triangle has funding for expanding our bus service improving bus stops, shelters, and bus facilities, and advancing a potential rail investment in Durham and Wake. Next slide, please. Uh, Go Triangle, in partnership with Durham, Wake, and Johnston counties, our two MPOs, NCDOT and the North Carolina Railroad Company, are currently proceeding with pre-planning efforts for the rail service that's included in the Durham and Wake plans. We expect this effort to culminate in a regional decision on whether to move forward with uh, developing the project within the next year or so. Next slide, please. Commuter rail systems uh, typically share tracks with passenger and freight service, serving longer trips than other transit and running service primarily during peak commuting hours. Here, we're looking at service that would provide 20 daily travel options in each direction in the corridor service every half hour during peak commuting periods, plus a couple midday and evening trips in each direction as well. Next slide, please. 
The rail service that we're currently looking at would stretch up to 43 miles across Durham, Wake, and potentially into Johnston County, connecting urban, suburban, and rural communities with 15 stations supported by park and rides and bus connections to expand the reach of the system. The rail service would complement existing intercity and interstate passenger rail in the corridor, as well as tie into potential future service on the Southeast High Speed Rail Corridor that's being studied and advanced by NCBOT. Next slide. In order to add significant passenger service in the triangle within the existing North Carolina Railroad Company owned corridor that stretches east and west through the whole state, additional rail infrastructure would be required. New tracks, bridges, signals, in addition to station platforms, park and rides, and support facilities. In total, the current project cost estimate includes over a billion dollars of construction. Next slide, please. The rail service would connect seven of the 10 largest employment hubs in the triangle, amounting to more than 100,000 jobs today, a number that will only grow in the future as more than 600,000 jobs are added to the region over the next 20 years. Almost two thirds of that growth is projected to occur in Wake County. So cross county transportation options will become even future to the success of individual communities and the region as a whole. From earlier studies, we know that the project would be projected to carry more than 10,000 transit trips a day, adding a critical mobility option to the region's most congested highway corridors. Next slide, please. Our current planning study efforts are focused in three areas. First, evaluating key project risks, in particular, those related to building and operating in an existing rail corridor. Second, evaluating opportunities such as economic development and job access associated with the project. And third, focusing on public engagement across the whole project area. Next slide, please. The work that we're doing now is all intended to support a regional decision on whether and when to move forward with this project into a development and delivery process that will likely take much of the next decade to complete. It will be a significant undertaking for the region and so broad-based local support across the region is critical to its success. Next slide, please. I also wanna share a bit about two of our big bus facility projects that we have in our capital program. Uh, Go Triangle operates regional bus service in uh, much of the same corridor as the rail today. Prior to the pandemic, we were carrying nearly 7,000 daily trips triangle wide. Our busiest bus boarding location for regional service is the Regional Transit Center, which is currently located in the Imperial Center, uh, just outside of RTP, in a location that was originally envisioned to be temporary. We're working on a feasibility study now to identify a suitable permanent location and hope to proceed to design and construction um, on that new facility in the next few years. Um, next slide. Our current transfer center serves about uh, 100, or excuse me, 1,000 boardings a day uh, before the pandemic, uh, primarily transfers between regional routes as well as some park and ride and walk up access to the surrounding office and light industrial area. We're looking for a new home for the facility to en- enhance safety, functionality for users, uh, improve direct access and connections to surrounding land uses, and streamline bus speed and reliability for routes coming to and from the facility from the freeway network. On the next slide, please. We haven't yet determined our contracting strategy for this project, but we'll be considering options as we move forward. Uh, Our next key steps on this one are to finalize selection of a preferred location and to pursue grant funding to move the project uh, into design and construction. On the next slide, please. Lastly here, I just wanna share a very quick update uh, on our bus facility project that's underway at Raleigh Union Station. Uh, This project includes an off-street bus transfer facility on the ground floor of a mixed-use tower Uh, on-street facilities for local and regional bus and future bus rapid transit, some streetscape improvements, and enhanced connections to Raleigh Union Station. We're currently in negotiations with a preferred developer to deliver both the public uh, component of the project, uh, the Go Triangle funded piece that that we also have a $20 million uh, federal discretionary grant for, um, as well as to deliver the private mixed-use elements uh, above the bus facility. 
So we'll have more information about contracting opportunities uh, for that uh, as we settle with, uh, with the developer uh, and move that forward through the design process towards construction. So at this point, I'll pass the mic back to Sylvester uh, to continue our, our program uh, with some other updates from Go Triangle staff. Thank you so much, Catherine. Next, we will have uh, David Moore. He's with Go Triangle. He is our senior procurement manager, and he is going to give us an overview of the procurement process. Uh, you got it, David. Thank you, Sylvester. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our small minority business outreach conference today. My name is David Moore, and I'm the procurement manager for Go Triangle. And just a little bit of background on myself. I've been with Go Triangle for the past 14 years and in the capacity of procurement for the past 11 years. I'm a certified local government purchasing officer with the CAG, which is the Carolinas Association of Government Procurement. And my goal and responsibility is to ensure that everyone has an equal opportunity to compete for Go Triangle contracts. So today, what I'll be discussing is what is a DBE? And how can you do business with Go Triangle? And finally, I'll give you a brief overview of a few popular procurement methods that are used across government agencies. Next slide, please. So you, when you hear the term DBE and DBE goals, what are we talking about here? And why did Congress create the DBE program in the first place? So the, as you may already know, the DBE acronym stands for Disadvantaged Business Enterprise and it is 51% owned by individuals who are socially and economically disadvantaged. But I've created my own terminology for the DBE acronym, and that is doing business equally, because that's what the DBE program is all about, affording women, minority, small businesses the equal opportunity to compete for Go Triangle contracts. So Congress wanted to basically create a level playing field for the socially and economically disadvantaged businesses so they can have the opportunity to compete. And since 1983, the DOT has established a single DBE goal of 10% for women and minority groups. Next slide, please. So we all understand that success doesn't happen overnight and that it could take years of hard work for companies to become self-sufficient and even make a profit. And for small businesses, finding a way to compete for larger contracts can be challenging. But this is where Go Triangle comes in. We create these outreach events to not only convey information, but most importantly, to create connections and partnerships with small and minority owned businesses that may not have the resources to compete for larger contracts. But these same small minority businesses may have the resources to team up with a prime contractor and to attain smaller contracts. And at the same time, have the opportunity to learn from these big businesses. So you see partnerships with small businesses and big businesses can foster this growth. And so instead of looking at it as big businesses versus small business, Let's try to look at it as big business and small business. I think the latter is inclusive for everyone. Next slide, please. So how do you do business with Go Triangle? Well, the starting point would, would be to register as a vendor on our website at gotriangle.org slash procurements hyphen opportunities. Once you have completed the registration process, we have your information your contact information in our database. So when opportunities come up, Go Triangle can notify you. And you will notice in the registration a field called vendor trade. Please make sure that you include your trade of work or your category to ensure that you are notified when we have a particular procurement in your trade of work. And examples of this would be electrician, plumber, architect, engineer. This is the beginning point of doing business with Go Triangle. In addition, you can attend some of our pre-proposals meetings and team up with prime contractors. 
And you can check our website periodically for procurement opportunities that have been released. Next slide, please. So one of the main objectives of Go Triangle in the procurement process is to have free and open competition. We are very conscious about our solicitations to ensure that fair practices are implemented. We do not place unfair requirements on vendors, and we ensure that if we list a brand name for a particular product, we allow the opportunity for a vendor to offer a comparable or equal product. Next slide, please. These are some of the practices that Go Triangle follows to ensure fairness and integrity in the procurement process. We advertise our solicitations to the widest public audience to foster free and open competition. And this includes advertising our formal solicitations in the newspapers, we post them on our website, and we create a bidders list from our database to notify vendors and contractors about any new solicitations. In addition, when we develop solicitations, we ensure that they are clear and non-restrictive so that everyone can bid and submit a proposal. And we allow adequate time for vendors and suppliers to submit a proposal or bid. In addition, we also ensure that there is transparency in opening and evaluating bids, and we make certain that the entire process is documented. Because as you know, our records are subject to the public records request also known as the Freedom of Information Act. Next slide, please. So in my next segment, I wanna give you just a brief overview of the procurement types or categories. So the first category type is purchasing, which is described by the North Carolina General Statute as apparatus, supplies, materials, and equipment. These include everything from furniture to office supplies, computers, cell phones, maintenance equipment, and even vehicles. The second category type is construction and repair. And this category is for construction, repair and renovations on buildings, such as vertical structures. In addition, there are non-vertical structures such as paving projects and utility lines that fall into this category. The third type is design services, also called professional services. These services fall under the Brooks Act, which is a federal law, and the Mini Brooks Act, which is a state law. These are professional services such as architectural work and engineering work. The fourth and final category type is the everything else category. If the procurement doesn't fall into one of the three categories mentioned, then it's in the everything else category. And these include everything from janitorial services, garbage collections, and legal services. Next slide, please. So next, I want to briefly cover the three popular procurement methods used across government agencies. Request for proposals, invitation for bids, and request for qualifications. Next slide, please. So the first procurement method is request for proposal, also known as competitive proposal. These are for the services that fall into the everything else category that is not subject to the Brooks Act. This method must be conducted with more than one source submitting an offer or a competitive proposal. The solicitation will award a fixed cost and a cost reimbursement type contract, and is generally used when conditions are not appropriate for a sealed bid. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Next slide, please. So some of the components of the comp competitive proposal are they must be solicited from an adequate number of people, minimum two. They also must be publicized and identify all evaluation factors and their relative importance. Any responses to public publicized RPs must be considered to the maximum extent practical. And Go Triangle must have a written method for technical evaluations of the proposals received and for selecting recipients and contracts must be awarded to the responsive, responsible vendor whose proposal is most advantageous to go trying with price and other factors considered. Now, let me add that to be responsive in a bid or proposal is one that meets and conforms to the requirements established in the solicitation. And to be responsible 
relates to the issue of performance by the contractor in terms of having the skills, experience, financial resources, and even the integrity necessary to complete the requirements of the contract. Next slide, please. So a continuation of the components of the RP are that proposals must be sealed and must be received on time. I cannot stress enough that please allow yourself enough time for your bid or proposal to arrive at Go Triangle. We cannot be responsible for a courier that has not delivered your bid. By law, we must reject all late bids as non-responsive. So please keep that in mind. So the proposals are divided into two parts, technical, which is the response to the scope of work, and price, what it would cost to complete the work. There is not a public bid opening, and evaluations are based on the technical response according to the evaluation criteria and scoring as established in the solicitation. And Go Triangle will negotiate with the top responders, meaning we are referring to a short list of at least two to three top responders. And we may even have them come in to present to the evaluation committee uh, prior to finalizing an award. Next slide, please. So next we'll talk a little bit about the invitation for bid or competitive seal bidding. So what are the elements of a competitive seal bidding? The answer is quite simple. Competitive seal bidding is a procurement method that contains a complete, realistic specifications of products and services and have two or more responsible bidders willing to respond. And in the case of construction in the formal range, you must have three responders and a firm fixed price contract is awarded. Next slide, please. In addition, we must provide sufficient time prior to the date set for a public bid opening, and the IFB must be publicly advertised. In the formal range, yes, this method does require a public bid opening. And any and all bids may be rejected if there is sound documented reason. An example of that would be late bids. So the main difference, or the main takeaway I want you to take from this is that an RP method or the main difference is the RP method and IP method is that the RP method takes into consideration the technical response and price, whereas an IFB takes into consideration only the lowest price. In addition, an RP is geared more towards services, whereas an IFB is geared more towards the purchase of materials and supplies and construction and repair. Next slide, please. And the last procurement method, the request for qualifications or the Brooks Act. Go Triangle shall use a qualification based selection procedures not only when contracting for A&E services, which is architectural and engineer, but also for other services as defined in 49 United States Code Section 5325B1 that are in direct support of construction, alteration, or repair of real property. And all engineering and design and related services are and include program management, construction management, feasibility studies, preliminary engineering, design engineering, surveying, mapping, and other related services, just to name a few. Next slide, please. So the Brooks Act required that an offer's qualifications are evaluated and that price must be excluded as an evaluation factor, and that negotiations must be conducted with the most qualified firm. And if we cannot reach an agreement on price with the most qualified firm, then we must proceed with the next most qualified firm. But keep in mind that once negotiations is ceased with the most qualified firm, and we proceed to number two to negotiate, we cannot return to negotiate with the number one firm. They can no longer be considered. And we will continue this process until a fair and reasonable price is reached. Next slide, please. And finally, I'll leave you with a picture of the most awkward three-way handshake ever. This is President Obama, US, Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada, and Enrique Peña Neto, 
former president of Mexico. I think this is a great illustration of how we can have a win, win, win situation. The message I get from this picture is that also, although this handshake is very awkward, it is an excellent demonstration that partnerships can be formed and all parties can win. The small, the women, minority owned businesses can partner with the big businesses and Go Triangle can meet their DBE goals and what I call a win, win, win situation. Everyone wins. And I know I can speak on behalf of the CEO and the Board of Trustees when I say that we are committed to an all inclusive procurement practice, creating a level playing field for the women, small minority businesses to be awarded Go Triangle contracts. So that will do it for me. I want to thank you for attending our small minority business outreach today. And please go register as a vendor on our website. That is the beginning point of doing business with Go Triangle. And with that, I'll turn it over to my colleague. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. That was a lot of great information. Thank you. I like that new acronym that you have for Disadvantaged <laughs> Business Enterprise. Doing business equal. Uh, yeah, that's what we need to do, to be fair. Next, we will have uh, Willie Noble. He is manager of construction for Go Triangle, and he is going to give us an overview of design and the construction process. Willie, I turn it over to you. Uh, good morning, and thank you, Sylvester, for the introduction. Uh, good morning to all. I just want to echo what all of the presenters and speakers have said before, that we welcome you to this very important outreach conference where we're sharing information that we, I'm sure you will find valuable to you as you uh, look at opportunities to uh, do business with Go Triangle. I bring uh, over 30 years of uh, engineering, design, uh, project management, and construction management experience. And I have the pleasure of working with a dedicated team of professionals uh, who are primarily responsible for uh, providing overview of the small capital projects, but we also provide support to the large capital projects. Uh, we perform architectural and engineering uh, designs, uh, design reviews and oversight, construction oversight, and also uh, assist in the procurement of amenities that we will uh, be installing at our various uh, facilities. Uh, we award contracts to on-call consultants who provide design services for uh, engineering and architecture, uh, provide services for surveying, and also provide services for real estate. Uh, and we also award contracts to contractors who will actually ultimately uh, do the construction work for those contracts. Next slide. Just wanted to talk about my agenda uh, briefly. Uh, I will discuss the process overview, uh, give you a progress update on our bus stops, uh, talk about the design and engineering process, the construction process, and then lastly, do next steps. This picture on this slide here is just one example of a bus stop that we've recently completed. And you can see we have a nice new shelter there. Uh, and uh, this is located at Meriwether Drive and Old Roxford Road. Next slide. This is a summary of the progress that we've made uh, on bus stops since 2018. Uh, you can see on the table there that we've working with uh, several uh, systems uh, from Durham County to go Durham, Wake County and Orange County. And we've been in the process of performing designs and construction and we've completed to date. I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that we've completed uh, bus stops, uh, 77 bus stops for go Durham. Uh, next slide, please. These slides show some of the amenities, and, and, and by amenities, I mean furnishings that we uh, provide at uh, our bus stops. The slide on the left shows uh, a bus stop, uh, the Glenview Station uh, adjacent to Walmart, and you can see there we have the blue shelters. We also install, uh, procure and install trash cans. Uh, you see the uh, tr uh, carts for the grocery store carts, and uh, we also install bike racks, uh, Cart corrals, as I mentioned before, and uh, we do the concrete uh, pads that those uh, amenities are uh, attached to. 
the slide on the left is just another example of a bus stop at Chapel Hill Road and Palmer Street with its new um, shelters. Next slide. Here I want to just give you a brief overview, and this is a, a, a high level overview of how of how our process goes. First, we send people out to assess the existing conditions at the bus stops and they record those. They take pictures and next we go into the planning phase of the project where we prioritize uh, the various uh, updates and improvements that we will make to the bus stops. Uh, that prioritization factors include looking at ridership, uh, the environmental justice uh, for minority communities, access to destinations that serve seniors, youth, and persons with disabilities, as well as roadway safety issues related to a particular bus stop location. After the planning does their work and prioritizes the group of bus stops that we're going to proceed into design, then we go to the third phase, which is design, and that involves also getting getting the proper permits that are required and procuring the right of way that's needed. And then the last phase, of course, is construction. Next slide, please. This next slide is just an example of the type of bus stop area plan that we prepare. Uh, again, before this is done, we perform surveys uh, and uh, it, and often right of way is procured dep depending on where the bus stop is located. But uh, this plan shows the location of the shelter, the location of uh, the bike pad, uh, the uh, concrete pad, uh, the bike racks, and uh, other amenities, uh, trash cans. There's a lot of detail on there, but again, we prepare uh, an, a map like this, if you will, a plan like this for each and every bus stop. Next slide. These are just some examples, and I know they're small. You probably won't be able to read them that well, but I just wanted to show you these are some of the types of plans that our consultants provide for us after we have prioritized the bus stop and given them awards to prepare the plans. They include a plan for survey, a plan for the design, and also they prepare plans uh, that are required for uh, the right of way. Next slide. We coordinate with a variety of stakeholders. Uh, uh, the city of Durham, for example, which uh, we've been doing most of the work with to date. Uh, we work with their uh, Durham Development Res uh, Services Center where we prepare and submit the, the various submittals and paperwork that they need for approvals. We also work very closely with NCDOT because a lot of the bus stops end up in their right of way. And so you have to prepare uh, encroachment agreements for them. And all of this work is done and has to be confirmed uh, and uh, before we actually start the construction. Next slide. And last but not least, we get into what I uh, was my favorite part of the work, and that's actually doing the construction. Uh, in advance, we have to prepare and, and, and we work with our uh, design uh, construction con contractors, that is, to prepare the construction related permits. Uh, I have a, a person who reports to me that is performing uh, daily contractor oversight. They're out there with the contractors, uh, viewing the work, answering questions, helping to coordinate various inspections. And that person is also responsible for quality assurance. So to that end, you know, we work with the various city departments to coordinate the inspections and approvals that they require before the final construction work is accepted. Next slide. In this slide, I just wanted to show you again uh, construction work that's in progress. Uh, our contractors place concrete uh, for the bus pads, uh, the landing areas. Uh, we also connect to nearby sidewalks uh, and, and may even repair sidewalks and roadway areas within the uh, immediate footprint of the bus stop. And then uh, after the concrete work is done and cured, then we uh, our contractors install the various amenities that you see on the uh, uh, picture on the left hand side of the page. Next slide. 
And here are a couple of pictures of bus stops that are completed. Uh, the one on the left is actually a parking ride. We also do parking rides, uh, not just bus stops. Uh, we worked and partnered with Wake Tech Community College to place a parking ride at their southern campus. And uh, you see that in this completed state with a nice uh, shelter and uh, bench and uh, trash can. And on the right hand side of the page is a bus stop uh, located at Henson Drive and Waring Street with its nice furnishings. And uh, you can go to the next slide. So in brief, these are the I items that are coming next on our radar screen. We're working uh, on the uh, FY22 transit work plans with the three counties. We're gonna continue to perform optimization of our bus stops. Uh, and we also are working diligently on updating our standard technical details that we uh, give to our design consultants to give them guidance in terms of what we expect and what our uh, desires are for the, the design of the bus stops. We're working on various interlocal agreements that have to be uh, uh, in place with our various municipal partners. And, uh, and we will continue that coordination with the various city departments and the counties, as well as NDC, NCDOT and other stakeholders. And I believe that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Willie. Um, that's a lot of good information as well. Next, we will have Jordian Heron. She will. She is our project control support specialist, and she is going to give an overview of eBuild. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Jordan Heron, and I also serve as Go, Tri Go Triangle's eBuilder Administrator. I'm going to talk to you about eBuilder today and give you a brief little overview. So what is eBuilder? eBuilder is a construction program management software, and it is used to track the progression of a project to completion. Here on this page, you will see a bu uh, our budget details page. This is located in the cost module. At the very top, we have a cost, a quick cost summary. There we have the current budget, current commitments. When we refer to commitments, we're talking about contracts and purchase orders. Uh, we have the actuals approved there. That's also referring to our invoices. Actual cost to complete is basically those invoices that will have, that will have to come in by the end of the project to be complete. And our forecasted over under is basically whether a project would be forecasted over or under budget. We also have like the project breakdown here, the project budget breakdown as well. And there you can see the original budget, approved changes, current budget, and any change, any pending or projected changes. Just a deeper dive into our cost module, we have the cost. Uh, we have the cost summary as well, quick cost summary, but this is more related to our commitment summary. There we will have all of the contracts and purchase orders related to that project in this area. Um, my particular favorite about the cost module, it actually shows you the remaining balance that's left over on the contract. It also shows you the actuals that were approved. So it helps our project managers to stay, you know, on top of any contracts that are dwindling down or anything like that. Um, it also gives them an idea if they need to go back, you know, do a, a contract uh, amendment so that we'll have uh, more funds to complete the project. Um, this page here is the actual cost page. At the very top, we have the actual cost summary. There we have, you know, cost related information to the project. We also have a breakdown of every invoice that comes in. As you can see there, we have the invoice number, the description, and any contract that it's related to. Um, it also shows whether if the invoice was paid or approved, and also the invoice amount. Um, this is basically a list of some of the processes that we have available in eBuilder. Um, I just wanted to show you guys a list of them. Um, as you can see at the in the right hand corner, there is a create new process button. There we are. Um, we have the ability to create any new processes that the project team or our consultants or contractors see fit. Um, I can typically go in and create any type of process that you feel that needs to be there. Of course, with the PM uh, approval, of course. 
This is a deeper dive into the process module. This is the change notice workflow. As you can see here, um, it starts with our project engineer. Once that information is submitted, it goes to the contractor for his or her review. If there's an issue with this piece, um, the contractor can send it back to the project engineer so that he can he or she can uh, address that issue. Once everything is reviewed and approved, a change notice record is created, and that's the base. That's basically the end of the process. Um, once the process is basically over, a document is created and is stored in, within the document module. Um, we also have a forms module. Um, basically, uh, just like the process module, we have the ability to create any type of form that we see fit in the system. Um, this is an example of one of the forms that our project managers and contractors and consultants fill out on a weekly basis. It's basically just a project update. So they'll get into the system, they'll um, input all of the required information. They also have the ability to attach any videos, documents, and photos to the uh, form. And all of that information will then be forwarded and routed to the project manager. Um, they also have the ability to copy someone on that report as well. So if you wanted to include another person on that uh, report, you can just find their role and uh, make sure you copy them in. Um, as stated before, with the document module, this is basically where all our documents are housed. Um, when a process or a form is created and it's processed all the way through, it is then stored in this area. Um, just for an example, this is um, our folder for our contractor submittals and their weekly reports are placed in this area. So you don't have to worry about um, saving copies or anything like that. We just make sure that we have all of this information in one area. And um, as stated before, I am the eBuilder administrator. Um, if you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to ask. Um, as far as any training, once the contract and everything is uh, everything is finalized, and you have a notice to proceed after our con construction uh, pre-construction meeting, we'll uh, get together and we'll go through eBuilder piece by piece, and I'll provide any help that you may need, also to your team as well. And I believe that's all I have, Sylvester. So I'm going to move on and pass it to my colleague. Okay, Jordan, thank you so much for that overview. Uh, next, we have Richard Major. He is Director of Capital Development here at Go Triangle. And Richard, we are going to turn it over to you. All right, Sylvester. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who has joined us today. We we also appreciate your your uh, very diligent attempts to uh, get registered for this event. And we promise in the future that we will have hopefully unlimited uh, opportunity for people who want to join us and participate in events like this. I want to start out by thanking uh, Jordy. And Jordy is, is the youngest member of our team, but uh, I can, as you can see, Jordy has done every most of everything for us in the planning for this meeting. Uh, she she did the registration along with an, another colleague, uh, Amy Pittman. So we thank you. We thank them for that with Eventbrite. And Jordan put together the slides for us and all of that. So Jordan, we, we can't thank you enough. I always tell Jordan that at some point, Jordan has her master's in public administration from North Carolina Central. I always tell her that she's going to be the mayor of, uh, of uh, Charlotte uh, one day. Jordan is from Charlotte. So we, we thank you, Jordan. And also, I want to tell you this, uh, participants, and you can just put your hands together. Uh, my supervisor and boss, uh, Catherine Eggleston, is on the call. You heard from her earlier. And Catherine is a mother, first time mother recently. And so we we thank her for joining that that uh, noble group of people uh, and women across the, the country and across the, around the world uh, who formed a foundation of our existence. So thank you, Catherine, for that. I want to start out by talking about the, the little bit about myself. I've been at Go Triangle for 16 years, and I'm the director of capital development, as Jordi had mentioned. I've been here 16 years, and of course, we've been waiting for some large-scale projects, and so hopefully that'll come to fruition, as, as uh, Catherine mentioned earlier. I worked for 18 years prior to that at WMATA in Washington, D.C., managing construction of large-scale projects, subway projects, station and line, um, all of those types of things. So. 
so we're we're as Willie Noble mentioned, we're we're ready to go, and we we think that we have the talent and the ability and capability. And as you've seen, as you listen to our other colleagues, David Moore, and uh, Jordan, and of course uh, Sylvester, and even the presentation from, from Lisa Wilson, you can see that that we're ready to actually get involved with uh, more heavily and uh, integrate ourselves into the the uh, immerse ourselves in the DBE and and historically underutilized business. Uh, uh, realm. Uh, we also want to thank Chuck Latuka, Tammy Hall, of course, and Sean Egan and Rochelle Perrin for participating. We always want to give you, uh, we think that life is a holistic existence, so we give you the forensic information about how many projects and the number of bus stops and shelters and what we plan for the future, but we also want you to be inspired by what you're hearing and what you're seeing and the possibility of what you can do working with us. So we think about life as a holistic experience. It's about relationships. Many of you, I was perusing the list of people who are attending the meeting, and I, I've spoken with many of you before. And so we thank you. And for the, the, the new partners, hopefully, that have joined this, we hope to also uh, be able to develop relationships with you. When you look at projects from my perspective, the, that whole process or, or the knowledge areas, integration, scope, time, cost, quality, human resources, communication, risk, procurement, and stakeholder management, all of those things combine to allow us to manage projects. But what about the relationships? That's where everything starts. So we're humbled by your interest in this and enthusiasm to join us today. And we also wish to extend our gratitude as I said, to the amazing team of presenters and partners who have joined us today. We hope that the variety of information and goodwill, well wishes, and the partnership that we offer you or already have with you uh, will be evidence of our belief that each minority business matters. We've heard, a, we've heard that term a lot, black lives matter, blue lives matter, all lives matter, but we want you to know today that minority businesses matter. Our collective after efforts on your behalf and the great people of this region hopefully demonstrate that we are in pursuit of the highest calling that anyone can receive. And I think that you'll agree with me. And that calling is to serve others and to help others. So how do we accomplish that? And how does our answer to this noble call translate into effective service on your part? Well, one way is for us to be authentic, to be as a friend of mine coined, a representative practitioners of our beliefs our values, our mission, and our vision. In 1893, the state of North Carolina adopted a motto that hopefully inspires all of us. It's the Latin phrase, es quam videri, and it means to be rather than to seem. Imagine that, if I am a professional, do I walk the walk or do I simply talk the talk? What if I was kind to everyone and not, to, not just appear to be? What if I treated my colleagues and my team with dignity and respect rather than just appear to be that way only when visitors are around like uh, the meetings like this and events like this. What if I treated all businesses with concern, compassion and effective support and not just a few select businesses that I have show favor to? What if we believed and we loved everyone? Not, you know, people say I love my country or I love my region. What if we loved individuals? And, just, uh, and show them authentic respect unreservedly. So the Greeks had something that they call Hippocrates or uh, Hypocrites, and that meant actors or pretenders. So we don't want to be actors or pretenders. We want to be and not seem. Years ago, as a means of working to achieve the noble motto of the North Carolina motto, I, which I appropriated as my own as a senior in high school. I wrote a poem called There Is. I love poetry. And so the third verse of that poem says, there is a love whose dimensions enlarge exponentially by sharing it with others. This love will never demand exclusion, nurture misinterpretation, or be demonstrated by selective exhibition. The tie that binds this love is not cemented in the superficial placidness of those who by benevolence more reluctant than inspired or contrived than sincere, feign peaceful coexistence with others they simply tolerate. This love is exemplified by a life of self-sacrifice and the hand that is lifted to assist the less fortunate. 
Imagine if we lifted our hands to assist the less fortunate whenever we see them. What would that look like? So I'll close with a short story about a little girl who was walking along the beach one day. You all know the story, but it bears repeating. And there had been a horrific storm the night before. So all of these starfish were washed up on, on upon the beach. And the young lady was, the young girl was running back and forth and she was picking up thousands. There were thousands there. She was picking up one at a time, taking them over and tossing them back into the ocean. Well, there were some people standing nearby and one of the gentlemen who was watching her thought that it was a, an exercise in futility. So he walked over and he said, young lady, he said, why are you doing that? He said, look at the beach. There's miles of, of, uh, of, of starfish who are strewn back up on the beach. He said, do you really think that what you're doing is going to make a difference? So the young lady undaunted picked up a starfish, took it back over to the ocean and toss, tossed it back in. And then she walked all over back over to the man and she mentioned to him, she said, she said, what I'm doing made a difference to that one. And so that's what we're here to do today is if we can make a difference in the life of just one firm, just one minority business owner, just one person who has attended this meeting today, then we will feel like we have made our objective and we will celebrate. So we want you to understand that each of you matter, not just everyone, not just all that's that's too broad. We want you to know that each of you matter and that the success of your business is vital to the prosperity of this region. And if we can, if we've made a difference to just one attendee, we'll celebrate. And we will continue this honorable and gallant pursuit of helping you to achieve your respective hopes and dreams, missions, and visions. So until I see you again, until we meet again, peace be with you. I'll turn it back over to Sylvester. Uh, thank you so much, Richard. Uh, first, let me let me thank you again for attending everyone our small and minority business conference. Um, it's been a pleasure to share with you today. Uh, we want to thank our guest speakers. We couldn't have done it without you. You did a fantastic job. And also to my Go Triangle team, thank you for the information that you shared today for those Go, for those Go Triangle employee, uh, employees that work behind the scenes on this event. Thank you as well. We hope to have another uh, outreach event later in the fall to update you on projects and opportunities. And we hope that this event has been beneficial to you and your business. And perhaps, perhaps in the next outreach, we'll be able to meet you in person. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Uh, for those that have left questions in the uh, in the chat box, we see that uh, the hub office has responded to some of the questions related to their office, and we even see Deborah Giles with the city of, of, of Durham. She has asked some questions on certifications, and there have been so many questions about the NCDOT certification. Uh, I've talked with Lisa, and she said that she would answer all those questions by email. So we're going to compi compile all the questions those for, uh, for Go Triangle as well, and we're going to respond to each and every question to every, e well, we're going to send the answer to your email. So don't worry about your questions, but we are going to respond to each and every question, uh, NCDOT, and as we see the hub office is responding, and again, we see Deborah Giles, which is also a great advocate for minority businesses. She's responding to questions. Um, we uh, someone has asked for a copy of the PowerPoints. We will provide those if you request it. We will certainly send you a copy of the PowerPoint. Um, and I see a lot of individuals are networking also at, at uh, right now, given this uh, at this event. So uh, again, we will respond to each and every question. Uh, there's been so many and uh, we're just about at the end of our time. Uh, but we're going to respond to each and every question in CDOT, uh, the hub office, they're already responding. But again, we just want to thank you again for attending. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you, and thank you so much. And we hope to see you very soon at another outreach event. And don't uh, don't hesitate to reach, reach out to us if you have any questions uh, in the meantime. Thank you so much, and we thank you again. <laughs>